Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome to Righteous Resolve. My name's Laisha, and this is my mom, Bonnie. Hi. So today, we want to talk to you about overcoming a spirit of fear. It's that time of the year where fear is really celebrated for just a really sake of celebrating evil in this time of year. But we see in the news, in our conversations with people, that people are suffering and are tormented by a spirit of fear. And so we just really felt by the Holy Spirit to really address the spirit of fear. What what is its source? Where does it come from? And how we as believers can overcome a spirit of fear? Yeah, you know, we were looking to go another route and really after prayer and conversation uh, felt that we really needed to talk about just fear, anxiety, and worry, and how to overcome those things in our lives as believers. So yes. just jump in. Let's jump right in. First of all, let's start with our foundational text today. We are going to come out of 2 Timothy 1 and 7, which tells us that God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Yes. And so it's important that we focus on what the word of God says, because one of the things we're going to discuss today is that fear is often rooted in a false truth. And so it's so important that when we are talking about overcoming fear, mm -hmm. that we know what the word of God says, because we literally have to read to our mind with that truth. You know, I want to read another version of that. That was King James. I want to read the Amplified because I think that even digs a little further into what is the root of fear. It says, for God did not give us a spirit of timidity or cowardice or fear, but he gave us a spirit of power and of love and of sound judgment and personal discipline, the abilities that result in calm, well-balanced mind, and self-control. Wow, that is a powerful scripture right there. And we even may take some time later to break some of those topics down. So let's talk about, really, what is fear? Well, there are two different kinds of fear. I think you read throughout the Bible, you'll hear um, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. It's under. It's important to understand the distinction between reverential fear, right. fear of honor. Like I have a fear for my mother and honor, and uh, quite frankly, a very concern for my life when I get a little bit too smart. That's different. But um, but there's reverential fear. You know, you have a certain respect and regard for someone for God that you will honor Him, that you will take time to spend time with him but then there is the fear that cripples us fear right. that attacks us in our mind fear yes. that affects our behavior and the decisions that we make so fear is uh it's crippling and honestly it has no place in our lives it doesn't as as believers we have to know that fear is one of the chief weapons of the enemy and it's important to even know where the root of fear comes from so where does fear come from it is the source of the enemy Number one, fear is not rooted in truth. It's not rooted in faith. Fear is not rooted in the character of God. And that is so important because one of the things we find out is when we can truly embrace the character of God and understand his character, then we, can't, we won't allow fear to, to, to overwhelm our lives. No, we won't. Um, the scripture in 1 John 4, 15 says, God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God, and God in him. In this way, God's love is perfected or matured in us so that we have boldness in the day of judgment. Because as he is, so are we in the world. There is no fear in love, but perfect or mature love casts out fear. Because fear has to do with punishment. Whoever fears is not in perfect love. And again, that's 1 John 4 and 15. Let's just talk about that. First of all, this scripture talks about the character of God. It says that God is love. Mm -hmm. That's a powerful scripture because oftentimes as we as believers, we have a fear that is wrongly associated with God's judgment over our lives. Mm -hmm. And it goes beyond um, I've repented of my sin and, right. and um, you know, I feel the need to get right. It goes yes. into a 
oh my gosh, I'm not good enough. Right. Or God is going to strike me down with lightning because he hates me and he's upset with me because I've done something wrong. Yes, that's a way that the enemy often tries to twist a, a healthy fear that we should have in God, that it's, reverence and honor we talked about before. Absolutely. And so sometimes it'll even cause us not to pray, not mm -hmm. to approach God. God as a loving father because we're we're we've messed up right yes mm -hmm. you know we didn't do this to a T right mm -hmm. well the truth of the matter is without Jesus Christ in our life there's no way we could ever fully measure up mm -hmm. now that's not a license to sin the Bible says that should we uh, uh, uh sin that grace might abound God forbid so we're not because of the love of God saying oh let's frolic and play and no. all the sin of the world no no but when we are actively seeking him and trying to please him we shouldn't have this un undue fear that it, we're not good enough mm -hmm. and sometimes that comes in doesn't it Linda? it definitely does um i would even talk i would even chalk that fear up or call it condemnation it's true uh roman says therefore there is no condemnation for those who are in christ jesus yes. and we'll talk about the how because it's important that you understand what fear is and where it comes from but how do you overcome it and you have to go back to your word because um by definition um it's Fear is an instance of emotion, an unpleasant or strong emotion caused by anticipation or awareness of danger. So if you're anticipating something, it may or may not come. It right. may or may not happen. So you're living out of uncertainty. Yes. But we need to live in truth. We need to walk in truth. And the word of God is what roots us in truth. So back to that whole fear of worry, fear of, oh my gosh, God's disappointed me in me and not and not pleased with me there is no therefore no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus yes. even the scripture in first John that we talked about before whoever lives in love lives in God so if you are truly examining yourself daily right. you are seeking God's face you are seeking his word as your gauge there is no fear for you to be concerned that oh man he's coming to get me he's gonna right. take me out that is the way that the devil kind of has when you don't have hope right you fear no consequence so if the devil can get in your mind and the mind is the greatest battlefield that it's all true. of us endure in this life and if the devil can attack you in your mind make you feel hopeless that, oh man you're trying so hard but look at it's you you're good enough something up then you will start to have <laughs> so you'll have a fear that causes you to YOLO, if you will, right. just to put that spin on it. Well, why even try? Because right. I'm trying so hard, and that will get you off track. And we know that the Bible says in Genesis, excuse me, that fear came in because of sin. Yes. And so on the reverse of that, fear can lead you to sin. So we need to be mindful that if we are truly, and we all know, when we are walking genuinely That's seeking right. god's face daily that we need to yes strive for more we should look to grow and increase in certain battles we should overcome and not have to fight however if you know intentionally walking with god there's no fear in that that's true that's true and so that's where do we get out of balance right mm -hmm. we get out of balance with knowing that yes we should have a reverence toward god but that does not mean that we should live in just this constant condemnation condemnation that we're not good enough you know i found a really good um kind of a summary of how fear comes in and and, and how it manifests and it came out of just bible study tools because it really was good sure. it said anxiety and fear frequently manifest itself in ungodly concern about provision, performance, or reputation, and appears to be rooted in incomplete knowledge, lack of control over circumstances, or failure to take an eternal perspective on things. So now look, let's look at where where fear comes in. We a provision. Mm -hmm. Don't have enough money. Just lost my job. Right now, we're not saying that these aren't things that we shouldn't have concern about. Right. They're legitimate. However, fear is not going to resolve the circumstance. As a matter of fact, and I 
work with people who oftentimes are in a situation where they are, they're in a desperate situation. Do you know fear can literally, literally paralyze your ability to make a sound decision? Yes, it can. Fear can come in. And if we're not careful, we can begin to think of the, what if I lose my car? What if I lose my house? That down spiral. A down spiral that, is not, that does not come from God. No. It, it, it really is, a, it is an irrational roller coaster ride mm -hmm. that if we're not careful, our mind will cooperate with mm -hmm. the enemy. Yeah. And now all of a sudden, yes, we may have lost our job, but now we're thinking six months down the road and we're homeless, mm -hmm. even though technically you're sitting right in your right. home still. You see mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And that can be whether it's over provision, we talked about performance. Oh my gosh, can I hit on this one? Yes. Honestly, I think that in my generation, at least, performance has been a big one. I can remember starting in about the fifth grade where there was just such a panic to do well that any sort of deviance or like variance in performance, so if I got an A plus here, and then I got a B minus. It was like the world was over. And I can remember that fear of not doing well, leading to feeling inadequate, feeling incapable of keeping up with other people. And well, all these people are doing so well, and I'm not performing well, and I'm not going to be successful, leading into high school when it was time to transition to college, where it's just like, I'm not doing well on my standardized tests, and I'm not going to get into college, or I'm not going to have to pay for college, and I don't have to be in debt and da 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 that that fear of just doing well keeping up and yeah. using other people as our standard yes. and our measure being so crippling to me that if i really look back at my school experience and even how i've had to work through that at times even in college as i finish up um that there were times that I was so operating out of fear of keeping up with other people that I did not grasp what I needed to grasp. Yeah. I did not use my time wisely because I was just, oh, no, oh, no, oh, no. Where it was just like you were always fine. Or even having so much of a perfectionist mindset yes, hit on that. that I never even started. Yes. Well, doggone it, if you just deal with what's in reality. Right. That has been a great thing that has helping, helped me overcome fear when, it, when it's regard, in regard to performance. Yes. Of, okay, what is true? And sometimes we get so wrapped up in our mind, and I mean, some of you high performers can probably speak to this where it's just like, there's this idea, there's this, and all this has to be done. Sit down. Yes. First of all, pray about it. I can do all things through Christ who has given me strength. Yeah, you know what I mean? Just recenter yourself, but then also get out of your head. Because yes. your head has an endless space and capacity to just think about everything ever. And right. every possible, what you think is a possible reaction because of this circumstance. But sitting down, write a list. Yes. Here's the objective. And here's how the objective right. is going to be achieved. And some of you may have to shorten that list. Let's just be honest. Yeah. Because the list will <laughs> go on and on and on. But mm -hmm. where you really need to say is, what do I need to get done today? Mm -hmm. And then what's feasible? Because like you said, right. that perfectionist mindset can come in. And before you know it, you're, you're, you're way off into la-la land mm -hmm. about, about what should be done. You know, Jesus talks about that in Matthew chapter 6, actually. Mm -hmm. He does. And, and that's why he said, if you think about it, he, he tells us, and it almost sounds like, how could I take no thought for tomorrow? Yes. I mean, but Jesus, again, if, if we're going to truly be uh, rooted in peace, rooted in love, it has to come back to this word. It does. Because if we base our thoughts, if we base, uh, you know, our, our lives on anything else, it, they really, it really is seeking sinking sand. Jesus said in verse um, 25 of Matthew chapter 6, I'm reading out of the King James Version. Um, Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life. Can I get a shout? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Take no thought. Well, look at this. My Bible, so I have a new King James version it gives little titles to each section and just above this it says anxiety in god's kingdom 
Hmm. It's making a distinction. There's anxiety. And, and then, then there's God's, God's kingdom. kingdom. Those are two, two different, different worlds. entities. Two, two different, different entities. And there is no place for anxiety and fear into God's kingdom. And we're going to talk a little bit about that. But first of all, if you just stop right in Matthew 6, verse 25, and I encourage you, look this up with us. Get your Bible up. Yes. If, you have, if you're on your phone, don't turn us off. But write these scriptures <laughs> down. Because it's really going to take a renewing of your mind mm -hmm. to not only recognize when fear comes in, but to stop it in its tracks. Matthew chapter 6, verse 25, take no thought for your life, whether you shall eat, there goes that fear of provision, what you should drink, what, what you should wear on your body, and, and what you should put on, is not life more than meat and the body more than raiment. Okay? Yes. Those things don't sustain you. Those are temporary things, and that's not where your purpose lies. Mm -hmm. I think even more so in this generation, too, with the advent of technology and being able to have access to everything ever, it can be a real concern, illegitimate concern about, well, I have clothes to wear, but are they the latest and greatest? And, well, um, I really like to eat food but I'm kind of a simple person and I didn't have time to meal prep for the next month of my life and you know just yeah like, or performance like well is my self-worth found in how well I perform in accordance to other people the Bible say no disregard that don't take regard for those things because if you look around in God's creation yes the birds they fly around and they don't really think about where they're gonna what they're gonna eat you know, the, the fields of the grass, they're not concerned about if they're going to be clothed because there's a trust. Yes. An innocent trust in God. I was actually watching my older sister's video, Danielle, and she was talking about how we have to get back to a childlike faith because there, so there's no fear in love and without faith, it's impossible to please God. Yes. Fear is stepping outside of faith. Therefore, you're not pleasing God. Yes, and faith or faith and love go together, and there's no fear in love. So you're finding you're you're driving a wedge between God. You're you're acting out of mistrust. You, you're you're not letting His perfect peace come in. Yes, and usually, if you talk to someone who is caught up in anxiety, caught up in fear, mm -hmm. even their talk, their self talk is not it's centered around God. No. It's not centered around reality it's mm -hmm. not centered around the now no it's not oftentimes they're worried about the past mm -hmm. or they're worried about something in the present people who they can't control you know mm -hmm. and how that's going to affect the future the voice of fear often says i know what they're thinking about me mm. you don't know what they're thinking know. about you and so what if they said it is that the truth no. and even if it's the truth did that come from God? See, this is where we need to d begin to delineate. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes we, we, we we're thinking and we're deducting. Oftentimes it's not reason. No. Fear gets you out of reason. There's, and there's a lot of times we're dealing with things. There's no way we would know. Yeah. And so what my in this video, what my sister was saying was that we need to get back to a childlike faith. Because I guess studies show in early childhood development that babies don't really have fear of anything and so they have a trust an innate trust that my mom and dad are going to yes. take care of me and we need to have that kind of faith and not worry about all the different things that we could be thinking about but really get down to what our heavenly father says about our lives and the word of god mm -hmm. the word of god is really yes you can think positive thoughts and that's great but ultimately it's the word of god that renews your mind mm -hmm. notice what jesus said because you talked about how anxiety is a living in anxiety is in a different kingdom than living in the kingdom it of god mm -hmm. so so notice he, jesus says but seek first the kingdom of god that so so now fear comes in and i want to i want to say this to be clear every human being has deal with fear yes we do. it's a matter of how far you let it go mm -hmm. okay it's a matter of if you speak to that fear and deal with it or you begin to consider it you begin to process
process it, you begin to act out of it, okay? So to be clear, well, until we go to see Jesus, when we're in this body, there will be a level of fear that will try to attack your mind. You'll get in your car and you'll be driving, be listening to your music, and all of a sudden, oh my gosh, I hope I don't die in a car accident. What? That happens to me. Where did this come from? It's a spirit of fear. You know what I've learned to do? I've learned to say, uh-uh, devil. With long life, he satisfies me and shows me his salvation, meaning wow. I've got the word of God on my lips. Mm-hmm. I've got the word of God in my heart. I'm renewing my mind with the word instead of allowing that bird to fall upon my head. Jesus said, seek first the kingdom. Mm-hmm. Seeking first the kingdom is through prayer, but it also it is what does God's kingdom say about my life versus what does this present world, what is this present circumstance? And, you know, some of you may be watching things, but you don't understand. My life is a mess now. Well, let me just ask you, are you living a kingdom life? Hmm. That is a really big deal. Another thing I correlate to my generation that we hear a lot of fear about various things, but we fear the wrong things. Yeah. You know, we, we do fear about, you know, being successful. We do fear about getting sick, not living a long life, not being successful, yet we do reckless things. Right. You know, is your behavior, how you're living life, aiding your fear? Right. But then not having enough healthy fear. Right. You know, regarding the standards that God has set before us in the Bible of walking a righteous and straight and narrow path, that will save you a lot of fear and anxiety because you know that there's a host of things that you're not even dealing with and you know you're not inflicting it on yourself. That's a game changer. It really is. You know, the Bible does tell us if we're buffeted for our own faults, take it patiently. What that means is some things that we brought on ourselves, we have to let it cycle out. There are certain things that we can bring up on our own life that I'm not saying it means your life is over, but there might be certain aspects of circumstances and situations that they're just part of the the playing field now because of maybe choices you've made. But you can stop those choices today. You don't have to continue to self-inflict the wounds of fear and anxiety because you keep going into toxic relationships. You keep going out over the week, over the weekend and, and, and drama filled situations. Uh-huh. So all these things could be inviting fear in and compacting upon your mind, compacting upon uh, your life circumstances. I'd even say on a practical level, finances. There was a moment in time where I looked at my finances and uh, finances and I was like, oh my gosh, I don't have any money. But then I looked at my account ledger. Maybe if you stopped going to Qdoba, right, you'd have money. So you know what I mean? Like I'm worried about, oh, I don't have any money. I have to get another job. And not. No, you don't. Just Make a practical decision. Exactly. So leave, living in the kingdom is having an answer for fear mm-hmm. when fear hits our brain. And, and fear hits your brain first. Okay? It does. It's going to hit your mind before it hits anything, the Bible says, whatsoever a man thinketh, so is he. So you've got to be careful. What are you thinking? What are you focusing on? Is it kingdom? You're saying, okay, Levon, you expect me just to live in some hell, heavenly realm all the time? Well, we have to live on this earth. But the Bible also tells us that we should be in the world and not uh, of the world. Meaning, yes, we're on this earth. But if all your friends are always saying, I hate this, I can't stand that, this gets on my nerve, that gets on my nerve, then you're, is that kingdom? No. And then you wonder, notice, getting on your nerves is a point of anxiety. Mm-hmm. I mean, those kind of confessions mm-hmm. are really inflicting fear upon ourselves. So we've got to first seek first the kingdom. Mm-hmm. I can tell you now, if your life is not right with Jesus Christ, you're not going to have uh peace peace and if you if you don't have peace then fear just keeps recycling Mm -hmm. over and over and over again you know one of the things that the lord really wanted me to jump into and that is where fear enters in and the first point of fear really is sin yep um in genesis chapter one essentially you you get this lovely story of how god created the earth Mm -hmm amazing god created man then he created woman and in uh, genesis chapter 2 verses 20 25 it says and they were both naked meaning adam and eve and they were and his wife and they were not ashamed Mm -hmm. so what 
fear and shame are married together. Because right, we're 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 afraid of perception. Mm -hmm. We're afraid of what people will think. It goes on in verse three and says, "Now the serpent was more subtle." I want you to write that word down because oftentimes it's the subtlety of what the enemy is speaking or that we consider ourselves that is causing us to fear. We know what happened in verse three. The enemy tricks Adam, tricks Eve into defying God. Where And that's the, that's the seat of most where fear comes. When we're out of alignment with God, whether it's we're not trusting his word, whether we're in we're in a lifestyle that's not kingdom, meaning it's full of sin, it's full of worldliness, it's full of compromise. Um, we can't walk in God's perfect peace. And there is a peace that passes all understanding. Mm -hmm. Notice in verse three, chapter three, chapter three, God comes walking in the the earth, uh, the garden in verse eight, and they heard the voice of the Lord walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wives hid themselves. Here comes the shame. Mm -hmm. Notice in verse, in chapter two, they were not ashamed. Right. Okay. They were comfortable with who they were. Fear and anxiety and worry tries to shake you out of the stability that God has already planned for you from the foundation of the earth. Mm -hmm. If you are in fear, you're not stable. If you are in anxiety, you're not confident in God, okay? And that's where we've got to come back to that place of stability. They said they hid. They were ashamed from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. And the Lord God called out to Adam and said to him, where are you? And they said, I heard the voice in the garden and I was afraid. afraid. Here's the first mention of fear, okay? And it wasn't that reverence of God, your holy, God, your righteous. No, it was, oh my God, because they had let the enemy in. Mm -hmm. They let the enemy in. And he said, because I was naked and I hid myself. If we're not careful, we will allow fear to shake us out from the stable, stable place that God has planted us. Mm -hmm. And I just wanna have you for a moment, ask yourself, what are you afraid of? What is causing fear in your life? What are you considering that simply isn't true? Or what story have you made up in your mind that takes you past today's circumstances into some near future of detriment mm -hmm. that's not even a reality today? Right. That's what the enemy does, and he does it with a with a with a, a root of sin. But also, if he can't get you to sin, oftentimes he tries to get us into a place of perfection where we feel like there's no way we can please God. But the good news is, is that because Jesus came into the world, yes, bring peace that we don't have to live in that state. So, so true. here's the how. First of all, after you're acknowledging the source of your your fears and your anxiety that's always good to just self-reflect you do how did i get here but you need to get back into the word and look at what the bible says about what your heavenly father offers to you and the authority that you also have as his son or daughter to overcome that yeah. so we'll look at john chapter 14 verse 15 or actually verse 25, excuse me, and it says, so this is the promise of the Spirit, and it says, these things I have spoken to you, being still present with you, but the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, who the Father will send in my name, this is Jesus speaking, as the red letters, <laughs> <laughs> he shall teach you all things, and he shall um, bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. This is a promise that Jesus gave. And I love how it says in verse 26, or verse 27 rather, that I'm going to leave peace, but I'm also going to give, give yes, peace. Yes, yes, yes. So I'm going to set the stage for peace, but I'm also going to give it to you. So you put that's it, but you have access to it. You know, and I want to just kind of stop there because oftentimes we, we struggle with even discerning what God is saying to us. And I love what 
verse 25 said, he said, these things I have spoken unto you. You know, the things that God speaks to us, they're usually about ourselves. Mm -hmm. You know, we have to be careful that we're not hearing so much about other people mm -hmm. that it's getting us out of a place of peace. Mm -hmm. Because honestly, and I think as a prophetic person, God is still speaks to me more about me than he does other people. Because that can also get you off into fear. It can get you off into worry. It can get you off of, usually God is, is God is a practical God. He, he really mm -hmm. is. And so the things that God is speaking, he's speaking to you about you. And I also want to encourage you that God is not a condemning voice. Mm -hmm. God is never a, a God that is telling you what you're not. Right. Notice what he said to, to, to uh, Adam and Eve. It was simply, well, who told you you were naked? But it wasn't this, you dirty, low-down scum. He didn't even say, you are naked. No, he didn't, he didn't say that. He said, who told you? Like, exactly. I'm acknowledging that you are, but who told you? So God is not coming in a voice of condemnation. Because if we're not careful, we can get into a place where we think we're hearing God. But really, the enemy has wrapped himself around, and he's condemning us. He, he's trying to push us over the edge. He's trying to bring us to a place of, like you said, no hope. And we have to understand the character of God to know that God is what? Love. Love. And he has left peace with us. Yes. Go ahead. I was just going to go on to the second point. Well, I think one of the things that I wanted to say very quickly here is Jesus said, not as the world gives, uh -huh. give I unto you. The peace, the world really can't offer peace. It really doesn't. The world offers temporary pleasure, temporary comfort. And it's usually because we're running from the fear that's always within us. You know, the Bible says the righteous run or the wicked run when no man pursues him. That's crazy. But the <laughs> righteous, well, the righteous are what? Bold as a lion. Mm -hmm. And so oftentimes the peace or the false sense of peace the world gives is medicated. Mm -hmm. It's drugged. It's drunk. It's fornicating. It's 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 fornicating. So you're desperate for companionship. It's so not the peace of God. Me. I'm afraid of being alone. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. not the peace of God. God's peace removes us from those things and gives us a peace that in Philippians chapter four says mm -hmm. it passes all understanding. all understanding. So it leads us to our second verse. Yes. So not only does Jesus give us peace. Now he's the only one offering bring it peace. He didn't say go talk to your best friend. Yeah. You know, which I mean, if you have an executive board member, you know, it is great to be able to go to someone um, to talk out when you are feeling afraid. That's fine. However, they are not the source of your peace. So it comes from accepting that Jesus is our source of peace. Ultimately, only he gives it only he left it. But then also recognizing the authority that he has given us to walk in peace. Yes. So Philippians chapter four, um, verse, we'll start in verse six. It says, be careful or be anxious for nothing, but in everything through prayer and supplication or prayer and petitioning God, God, your promise says yes. that you would give me peace. Right. Um, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. So whatever that source of fear is, whatever that anxiety is, you have the right. And I, and I can say this. When we pray, we first need to start with us. Because really, when we pray, we need to know that really we can only change ourselves. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't mean that we should not look into situations and pray about circumstances that affect us. But sometimes, Laisha, I just want to kind of want to talk about how people's prayers are off dealing with other people and right. then wondering why those circumstances aren't changing instead of dealing with themselves mm -hmm. and praying about the situation that they can actually manage. Again, God is a practical God. Yes, yes. And oftentimes anxiety, fear, and worry come because we're worried about things that we honestly have no control mm -hmm. over. Exactly. And they affect our peace. They affect our mind. They affect our world in ways mm -hmm. that really, if we were to put them in perspective, they're none of our business. They really are. We put them in perspective. They're things that are out of our control. So it's, it's so important that we understand 
that having peace oftentimes starts with what do you have control over? And that goes into what are you thinking about? What are yes. you focusing on? So it says, be anxious for nothing, but by everything through prayer and petition, make your request, your personal request, known to God. And the peace of God that passes all understanding, no matter the circumstance, will keep your heart, so your spirit, and your natural mind, yes. which are components of our soul, um, spirit, mind, and body, um, through Christ Jesus, who is the Prince of Peace, who is the one who gives us peace. Finally, whatever things are true, whatever things are honest, whatever things are just, pure, whatsoever things are lovely, if there or whatsoever things are of a good report, if there be any virtue, um, if there be any praise, think on these things. Those things that you have both learned and received and heard and see me do and the God of peace shall be with you now this is even a similar message to what Jesus said to the disciples in John when he was leaving them with peace he said I'm going to give you this peace and this comfort through the Holy Spirit so that everything I have taught you about overcoming fear about addressing the devil about what the kingdom of God looks like and what the promises are of those sons and daughters who are participating in the kingdom I'm going to bring those back to you Remembrance. Yes. But you have to change the way that you're perceiving the circumstance. Yes. You need to think on it. I love how it specifies what is true. We right. have to deal in reality. What is pure? So even if you are dealing in a negative situation, but then it's true, you're not making things up. You heard what they said. You were standing right there when the drama went down, and it's not a good situation. Think of what's of a good report. Right. And you need to pray on those things. You need to think on those things. A lot of times, I can say this personally, most of my fear has been contained here. It's yes. not so much what I said, even though that did eventually happen if I allowed my fear to dwell too long in my head. But what what is your self-talk? What yes. is your subconscious telling you? Are you allowing those circumstances, that negative thing that actually happened to you, that bad report? Or that lack of performance, what your checking account ledger said, whatever it is, are you letting that just cycle over yes. and over in your mind and letting it steal your peace? Or did you take the time to say, you know what, God? I'm going to think on the true thing. So if the circumstances trash as all get out and I can't see any hope in this, what does your word say? Get that word in front of your face. Because yes. you the need to pray. And the Bible says that God is a present help in the, the time, time of, of trouble. Of tr trouble. He also says present. he's a present help in the time of need. Mm -hmm. And so that's where even in real life circumstances, we've got to bring ourselves back to what God's word says. Mm -hmm. We've got to renew our mind mm -hmm. with the word of God and not cycle the negativity that our circumstances may be speaking to us. You know, Laisha, I want to take some time to pray right now yes. and uh, talk about what we're going to talk about next week. But let's let's go ahead and take some time yes. to pray. And I just feel the need to pray out Philippians 4, 7. Yes. That's a great way to really just um, pray out what the word says. So you're not, you know, coming out of your own head. You're praying the powerful um, mighty double-edged sword word of God oh, to yes. cut that fear up. And this is supernatural. And can I even tell you that even, even clinical psychiatrists would use positive confession to help renew your mind. It's called cognitive therapy. Well, you can take the word of God and renew your mind mm -hmm. and pray the word and get the truth of God in your mind, in your atmosphere, to help battle that spirit of fear. Mm -hmm. Alicia, do you want to show them how to pray the word? Yes. So, Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for all those who have tuned in to this episode of Righteous Resolve. Lord, we pray and thank you that they are not anxious for everything, but in everything, for through prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, they will pray to you and make what they're struggling through, what they're going through, known to you. And, Lord, as a result, your peace, which passes their circumstances, will keep their hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Lord, we pray that they focus on what's true, what's honest, what's just, what's pure, what's lovely, what's of a good report, and those that are good praise. Lord, that they will focus on the things that they have learned in their churches, the positive things that they have learned in 
in their lives and heard and they've seen in your word and your peace shall be with them and we thank you for that in jesus name and father right now we pray Again, we come against torment right now mm -hmm. in Jesus' name. Father, that those those mind-binding spirits that have called torment, that have called uh, cyclic thoughts, thoughts that just tend to continue to go on and on and on. And Father, we break the power of those thoughts in Jesus' name. Yes, there have been demonic powers. You know, somebody's gone to a haunted house. And you went to a haunted house and you're saying, I have not been able to sleep since. Don't go searching out for fear. You've got to be careful mm -hmm. at this time of the year. There's so much fear in the atmosphere mm -hmm. because of things that are, you say, well, it's just a haunted house. No, there are a lot of demonic, evil, uh, just practices mm -hmm. in the, the, the society right now. But we bring the power of that now yes. the bottom line is do you know the bible says that no evil shall befall you no now we shut the door to it and we speak yes. peace over your mind and command those evil spirits to go yes in jesus name, in jesus name. and i want to encourage you while there can be things that try to track us spiritually the enemy can't make you do anything no. that you don't want to do and that you don't cons consent to and cooperate with. And so having the word of God upon your mouth and renewing your mind with the word of God is one of the most powerful weapons you can use to overcome the enemy. Listen, don't go looking for the enemy over every walk. Everything's not a devil. Sometimes our lives are just drama filled. Listen. Sometimes you might be the devil in your own life. Sometimes I love. I saw a meme the other day. It says, "You know what? Drama does not just happen to us. Either we invite it in, either we've created it, or or we associate it with. It. And where there's drama, there usually is fear, anxiety, and worry all tied up into it. You know, there's a lot we could talk about. We're gonna bring this back tomorrow. Not tomorrow. Next week, we're gonna talk about the voice of fear." Because the vo spirit, fear does speak to us. It does. Mm -hmm. And we've got to learn how to discern the voice of fear so that we're not giving into it when it comes knocking at our door. Until next time, listen, pray for us as we pray for you. And we thank you. Like this, share it. I think it's a timely topic that will help a lot of people as they combat the spirit of fear and overcome by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of his testimony. Jesus Go Jesus. We're going to make your name famous, Jesus. Yes, we are. See you next time. All right.